This tutorial is part of our practical database design course. You can find a link to the YouTube playlist for this course in the video description. Alternatively, if you like this course, you can watch the complete course uninterrupted, ad-free, access updated tutorials and download the source code and more from our Udemy course. Again, the link to the course is in the video description. Hopefully by the end of this tutorial, you will be able to identify a multi-valued field and then also resolve a multi-valued field in a relational database table. By removing multi-valued fields, we are ensuring that our table or that our attributes in our table meets the first normal form rule of each attribute contains only one value. A multi-valued field, a field that allows for the storage of more than one value. What is important to remember with examples is that they represent a preliminary entity attribute or set of entities and attributes. This is not the final form of this table. Most examples are just hypothetical to support the learning process. So to identify multiple or multi-valued fields, it's always best to sketch out your table, whether that be on paper or using Excel, Microsoft Excel, and then add the data that is intended to be inserted into that table. So we can see from this example that when we think about the data that's going to be inserted for this particular student, the student may be attached or may be part of two classes or two subjects. So this student here may be taken two subjects, database one and network one. So if we had a set of attributes such as this, where else would we add that data? So that suggests that that subject information all needs to be in the same field. So what we have here is a multi-valued field. So we can work through this by better understanding the data that's going to be inserted into the table. Now we might need to consult the requirements or do some additional tasks to determine this, but we can say in general terms that a student, this is the student entity, will only have one ID. So each student will have only one ID. So that's just a single value inside of this field. We're saying that this student might be attached to multiple subjects. So we have a multi-valued field here. And then generally the student will just have one name. So that then is a singular value in this field. So there are a few different approaches to use when resolving multi-valued fields. The first approach, we can create new fields. So for each subject that we might want to associate a student to, we could add a new field. Now, if you remember back to the database design objective tutorial, one of our object objectives was to try and avoid null values as best as we can. Now, the problem with this approach you can see that potentially we're going to be promoting null values because not every student will potentially be attached to multiple subjects. So let's imagine there were 20 subjects. We would now need 20 new fields and most of those fields for a lot of those students would be potentially null. So we're promoting null values here. So this isn't necessarily the best approach to take. The second approach is to utilize multiple rows. So you can see here that this student now has multiple rows and in each row, we specify the different subject. Now you might already noticed and spot the issue here. We now have redundant data. We're now recording the student ID and the name twice. This is going to potentially cause update anomalies because if we were, to, for example, to update the name of the student, we would need to make sure that we updated all of the instances of that student. And although we could programmatically create this, service or this feature, it is a little bit unnecessary to store multiple duplicate data potentially in this case. So we want to try and avoid this approach. So generally to resolve multi-valued fields, we would first of all create a new entity using the name of the field and then go ahead and create a new attribute to accommodate the value that's being removed from the original table. So going back to our example here where the student is associated to multiple subjects, we're going to remove the subject field and the values and create a new table. So we've gone ahead and created a new table, a new entity, and that is the subject entity. So we want to model information about the subject, in this case, the subject ID. So that was removed from the field, the subject ID data. So you can see what's happened here in actual fact. We've now removed this data and by doing so, we're actually removing redundant data from the original table. 
because now we only need to specify the subject ID once within this table. Now what's interesting here is if you watched the earlier tutorial where we introduced the database design objectives and considerations when designing a database, we have already considered many of them in this step. Once you learn more about the design process, you may also take the additional step of identifying the relationship between the entities. For now, and until we get to that stage in this course, we're going to simply just remove any multi-value fields and create a new table in our database. So to summarize, multi-value fields are fields with multiple values or contain multiple values. Most of the time, we would need to model our data in order to identify any fields with multiple values. To resolve a multi-valued field, we should create a new table and then move the multi-valued fields from the original table over to the new table. And as I mentioned, the last step may be to create a relationship between the two tables. Just as a final point, just to answer the question, why do we need to build a relationship between these tables? Because let's remember that we now have data that's separated over, over multiple tables. This is a relational database. So there's relations between the tables here. So we're saying that this student will be related to a subject or subjects. So we're going to need to build a way of actually building that relationship and tell the database, in actual fact, this data is related to this data over in this table here. So again, we'll look at that later in this course when we start to build relationships. But if you're wondering why we're separating the data from the tables or how that's going to work, that's essentially how it's going to work. We're going to, later on in this course, learn how to build these relationships so we can connect the data from one table to another table.